Hi, today we're going to talk about getting your bottles open, how to open a wine bottle. We're going to talk about some little cheap methods, but mostly we're going to talk about the proper, formal, elegant way to do this. Let's start with this, the obvious thing. You have to have a bottle that needs opening. Okay, now, on top of the bottle, there's this little thing here, which on this one is hard to see because it's dark just like the bottle is. But this is a little plastic cover that goes over the top like this. I'm sure you've seen them if you've opened any wine bottles at all. Well, this one happens to be made out of plastic, and that's not uncommon. The other ones that you're likely to run across are going to be made out of some kind of metal or foil. Uh, again, very light stuff. It's not like you know stainless steel or anything. So, ideally, what you have to do is deal with that first. There's a couple different ways. The informal shortcut, and this won't work with all of them, but you give it a try if you want. If you're just at home, you just want to open a bottle for yourself, or you and your significant other or guest or whatever very informal situation you don't need to go through the whole formal cutting it off you can try it it may not work but it may just get a hold of it and twist the bottle if it moves then you just kind of work it all the way up and it comes right off in your hand that's one method i use that a lot it's kind of if i'm here by myself just want to open a bottle and get going on it just twist and pull okay second method is very unelegant or inelegant is to take a knife of some sort you know like there's one attached to this and we'll talk about this in a minute you can just kind of peel it up like you're peeling an apple or something get it started and then just grab it with your fingers and it kind of unzips that way another alternative if you don't have the little knife thing handy is you literally just take the screw part the tip of it and get under there and get it started that way again all you're looking to do is get a little tear going to start Okay, so that's one way to do it. And so it's still intact right now. All right, this is a waiter's pocket wine opener. Um, there's probably a little bit more elegant name for it, but kind of think of it as a big pocket knife or, or a Boy Scout knife in a sense, because it's got a lot of gizmos in it. All right, the first one we're gonna look at, and I've had this one for years, it's my favorite one, is there's a little knife that folds in, literally just like a pocket knife. And what you want to do on that is just get it right up close and start cutting. You just kind of trace the edge around. Now this is how a waiter would, should do it if he's serving your wine to you at a table in a restaurant. So let's take a closer look at that. Now what we're going to do is, again, we're going to cut right around this little lip. If you, uh, you can kind of take your fingernail on a bottle and feel it. If you've got a bottle handy, just pause this video, take a look at it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's actually like a little band of whiter glass on most bottles. I would say the majority have that, where it, it comes down, goes out, down, and then goes back in, and then down the neck. So that's where we're going to cut. The uh, goal part of this is right in that little corner of that, that valley there. Now let's go ahead and get this capsule open. So just kind of watch here. Put the knife up, turn the bottle, and kind of reset. Go around with that knife. I'm going to go all, make sure you're all the way around. I usually kind of do two times around just to catch those spots. All right, now this just comes right off. Oops, just like, a, just like a bottle cap on a can of soda, or a bottle of soda rather. So what this gives you now is a clean edge to pour from. The one of the things that really kind of, I don't want to say grosses me out, but I really get, don't like to see is people just kind of rip these things off and there's like little hunks of aluminum foil sticking up and people pouring right through that. That can impact the taste of your wine, probably not a lot, but the more sensitive your palate becomes, the more adept you are at tasting these things. You don't want any interference. You don't want that outside stuff there. Okay, so now the next step, fold up the knife and you're not going to show you this up close so you know this is my opener that i like i'm going to turn around where i can get a hold of this it's got like the little pocket knife thingy in it and it's been serrated so it cuts well i'm going to turn it over you can see that better get in the camera there we go and so now i'm now i've done cutting that off i can fold this back in well the next step i want to do is unfold the rest of it this is basically the lever, I guess you call it, or the fulcrum or something like that. And then, of course, this is the screw part. Now, notice the screw. It's not a screw like you use to screw in the wall or screw a board, two boards together. This is actually a coil in the sense that it's a, I think, helix. Remember that word, double helix, DNA? Well, this is a, 
a, not a double, it's a single helix. It's kind of think of a spiral staircase going all the way down. You've got this piece of metal that's a uniform thickness. And if you look at it this way, if I can tilt that right, you can actually see there's a hole down all the way down the middle into the um, handle part. So what this means is when you're using it on a cork, you're actually getting a whole column of cork that's undisturbed and you're wrapping this around it in the sense and that it's um, reinforces the cork when you pull it out. Kind of think like reinf reinforcing bar or mesh in concrete. It holds it together better. And that's what this cork is designed to do is hold it together as well as get a grip to pull it out. All right, so now what we're going to look at is what do we do next? Of course, we want to get it screwed in there I get, so you can see this the best. Shouldn't have worn a white or light colored shirt today. All right, so you want to get it down there and you want to kind of push it into the very center of that cork. Just, you know, push it in enough where, oh, there we go. That went in pretty well. You can see it. I got just a tip in there. Now, apply some downward pressure and just start turning. And you want to keep it as straight up and down as you can. So you're getting right through the middle of that cork. And once you get it started, now this is pretty well in there. So now it's pretty easy. Just a couple fingers. Keep twisting, twisting, twisting. And then you want to start. Stop. I usually like to stop about a half a turn. And if you look at that, you can see there's just that one little curve left on here. I have found with this particular opener, and it's true with most of them, they're pretty uniform in size, that um, if you go another half a turn, it'll poke through the bottom. Now that won't be a bad thing necessarily, but it could put little chunks of cork in there if it's the cork's a little bit loose on the bottom. You push it out and it falls in your wine. Not going to hurt the wine. It's already been touching the cork for however long it's been in the bottle. But it just kind of looks bad if you pour it. And here's this little chunk of stuff floating in someone's glass. Okay, so now I've got the cork in. Next step we want to do is adjust this. I guess this would be the fulcrum. Now if you notice, this has, let's turn it this way so you can see it better. This has a little notch on the end, and that fits over the lip of the bottle. Uh, which I, if that were the bottle, it would, it's like right there, sort of. Kind of get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to turn that around, get it hooked on there at that point. Now, what you want to do next, just to keep it from slipping, is kind of put it around there, put your hand right up against it just to hold it in place. It's not going to take a lot of pressure on your hand, but if you don't, it's got the risk of just slipping like that. So to keep that from happening, you want to just kind of hold it in place gently. It's not too hard. You want to get a firm grip on the neck of the bottle, and then just my approach, put my thumb up here, and I'm sitting down, this is a little awkward. And if you get where you can't lift that way, then readjust your hand. Just keep pulling, and these will, should pull it straight up. Instead of pulling it sideways, it goes straight up. Now, now when you get your opener kind of in that position, you can see it's all the way extended. Now, then just kind of wiggle it out and see how did you hear that? That old noise? Anyway, it pulls right out. And as you can see, it's not sticking through. So that's a good thing. I'm going to push this aside for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and give it another half turn. And it just starts to poke through. So there again, that's that extra half a turn. If you stop for that, then you won't have that situation happening there. It's right there. You get that whole thing. This would not have pushed anything into the wine. So it's, and again, if it does, it's not a big deal. You will occasionally find a very short cork, so doing this little trick, it's going to go through anyway. Don't worry about it. All right. So, that's how you use the waiter's opener. All right. So, let's get the uh, official glass up here. And cheers. You have to keep a few things in mind. What's your budget? What's your taste? Do you want to spend a lot just because you have money to burn? Do you want to spend a lot more to get a better bottle of wine? Do you want to be a cheapskate and spend as little as possible? Or do you just want to get a really good bottle for not that much money? 